Hey, Ryan. How are you, bud? I'm, I'm good. And you? You know, I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Nice. All good. Sounds fine. All good. Sounds super fine. How, how are you feeling? It's like really. Well, oh, you know, cool. ironically, I'm not feeling super hot, but only as, well, I haven't been feeling great for six days, but. Okay. Uh, ironically, went a little downhill the last five or six hours, but, you know, oh, I'm no. testing every day and as hard as I'm trying to get Omni, I can't, I can't get it. Are you positive or you're not positive? You're negative. No, my daughter's got, my oldest daughter's got it now. My wife got it on the 17th. My oldest daughter got it on Sunday. I'm trying to get it, but I just like. Maybe, maybe you you're a false it. negative. Maybe you've already had it. You might I think you probably, I, well, one would assume I probably already have had it based on, you know, the fact well, I should have. You probably should have had it. You don't necessarily have to have it, but you could, you know, you could have got it. I mean, or maybe, you know what, or like you said, maybe the, the tests are, you know, just showing up the wrong side, right? Yeah, totally. You just don't know, but all you the don't. travel I do and Whistler and everything else, like if anybody should have had it, one would have assumed I would have, uh, would have caught it already, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Hey, thank goodness. It's, uh, it's the beginning of the end and the, my, my family's, well, everybody I know who's had the Omni so far is, you know, they've skated it pretty easy. Okay. I know the same thing. The only ones I know with had trouble are the anti-vaxxed. I've got one who wasn't uh, vaccinated and not doing well at all. Oh, interesting. Like hospital, not well at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody wow. I know was vaxxed and they were all like, you know, cold. Yeah. 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 Sort of. <clears throat> I, mean, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, at least, you know, hopefully this is the tail end of it. Hopefully this <sighs> thing is going to be done pretty soon because I we can't do another year of this shit. I, I, oh, it's not, guys. No, it's, like, it's, it's enough. Great. Drain the life out of me as a business leader, literally. <laughs> oh, especially, I'm sure for you too, because you do so much bloody travel. Yeah, I'm used or to you it. Right used to. <laughs> in 2021, I did. Oh, I got to get this right now. Well, in the one year circuit of no, it was 2020, I guess. My God, like, that goes to show you eh? how scary is that. Yeah. So one trip in before uh, Expo West would have been. Expo West was the the moment where we all, you know, cut shop. And that was it. And Phil, you probably don't know this, but I do about 120,000 air miles a year. Holy crap. And, and I did 2,300 that year. The one flight wow. to Chicago return was the only flight I got on for wow. a year. So like, that's like a massive change to life. And it sounds like a yeah. good thing. And it mostly is, but it's crazy when your life gets altered so dramatically yeah. from 10 years yeah. of, you know, your family dynamic, everything going yeah. this way to like, yeah. all of a sudden you're just like, Hey, now the family's like, who are you? Why are you here? Why are you here so right? much? Like, why? Like, why don't you go again? <laughs> yeah, my my family loved me as a picture on the wall and uh, and a paycheck. And then all of a sudden, they're like, really? This is a lot of you. Yeah, like, you don't bring don't souvenirs anymore. What the hell, man? That like, you're at, here and absolutely. you order me around and I go souvenirs. This sucks, right? Like, well, It changes the whole house, right? Because you had the wife home probably with the kids, right? And doing their thing. And all of a sudden, a whole new set of rules comes in. Yeah. This guy who was never there is chiming in and chirping in and thinking, who the hell are you, man? Like, go back on a flight. Like, get the hell out of here. Well, Mom they got had to it, man. Mom, we were under control without you around. Yeah. Totally. And, they're, and they got to know the real me, right? Which was like, I was way better is the part that, you <laughs> yeah, know, the guy was in half time. And I'm like, oh, I love you guys. Great to see you. I'm like, happy dad. And instead they're like, who's the grump who's like exactly. yelling at his team all the you time know, and us. When he was traveling, he said yes to everything, right? But now yeah, he's yeah. home. It's like, no, who you talking to? What are you looking at? What are you reading? Damn it. Like, <laughs> Close the light, shut the door. So true. So true. I hear you. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. No, we're we're glad to have you. No, uh, glad you I'm glad you yeah. said yes. I mean, we yeah, kind of yeah. thought it'd be kind of cool to get the different side of the industry because yeah. a lot of times we have true like CPG guys on, right? That's a yeah. lot of what we do, or we'll have different types of leaders, but we've never had anybody sort of in the media side um, who's come up through the whole channel and done a bunch of stuff and is connected all over the place. So we thought that oh, might be kind of a cool one to. Oh, cool super complimentary. On. And the fact that I made it on before number 300 was like, I was really flattered. I was like, this is, you know what? <laughs> top this 200, is... top 300, baby. Top 300. Top 300. 300 is like, it feels really good. It feels really good. I was really flattered. I was like, I was a quick yes. I was like, this is, this That's is good awesome. stuff. Awesome. Kenny, you want to do an intro? You know, it's funny, Phil. Yeah. I think Ryan and I've probably met or talked maybe four or five times over the years. Yeah. I think the first time I met you, if I'm not mistaken, I thought you came into London Drugs. It's true. And you guys were trying to do something with the, I think it was a live still at the time, or a yep. live magazine, but I can't remember what it was. And as with most in this industry, they go through, try to go through the buyers. 
and we're the worst ones to go through because you got to go to marketing, right? Because all we're thinking is, okay, I mean, what's this going to cost me? Like, you know, you're not under getting the game. I don't like paying for shit. Like you're supposed to be coming to me with money. And then, you know, you don't come and ask me for money. I'm a buyer. Right? You, you, were, do that. you were awesome, Kenny. I do remember it was, it was obviously Richard Pollock who put us together and mutual, mutual besties. And, uh, um, I came in and saw you for sure to talk to you about, we just done Sage for Loblaws. And I was like, this is going really well. That's right. Can we wow. do something like this for you guys? A yeah. freebie, ad supported, but for London Drugs. And right then, you actually, you guys had just hired London, had hired a new, call it vice president of marketing, maybe executive vice president, but right up at the top. And you actually said, you know, hold off a few weeks, wait over the holidays or something, and then, you know, let's do an intro after. And you did. And I went and met with a guy. It was really good. It was a really good meeting. It ended up being that just London wasn't quite big enough to, you know, sustain what we needed from like a vendor blah 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 but it was a good intro and then that was it and i was like that was when there was a meeting of minds and i was like there's another guy in the industry who has tattoos and it's kind of cool this is like awesome i love this guy this is amazing yeah man because we were we were two of the few yeah right yeah two exactly. of the few. now they all copycatted but in that time two of the few baby plus we were like the same age so yeah which is true too <laughs> <laughs> you are not so anyway, we have, we have Brian Ben on who, see, I'm going to get all wrong because when, when I knew you, you were owner in charge of a live magazine and a bunch of other publications. And yeah. since then you've morphed into, I don't know what the hell you're doing anymore. Like you've got a whole yeah. bunch of things under your belt and you're doing a bunch of things. You're on another podcast, a competing podcast with yes. three or four other clowns. I've yeah. To a few episodes. It's kind of funny. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, it was interesting because when I got this, I finally found like I made it because that one was self-made. <laughs> this one was invited. So you're like, I figured I now know the key to getting on a podcast is guest number 267 is you just do your own and do make it own. hot enough that somebody feels sorry for you and invite you on theirs. Do your own. That's you, it, man. You're, you're 200. You'll be 217. So you moved up like. Holy Jesus. Oh, wow. You got 50 spots. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got to go. I'm going to wait until you guys get more desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you could have made the you could have cracked the top two hundred if you had said yes <laughs> earlier. I mean, we talked to you. I think in September, October. I, I, I'm good for you. That'd be awesome. January. I'm looking at film, thinking <laughs> that's awesome. Because we were talking, we were reading the email over there. I said January. Who is this guy? That's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 you, if you got to fake it until you make it, and I haven't made it, so I just got to keep faking it. Like, uh, we thought, holy I think shit, I can spot man. you in March, March, March eleventh. I think it's looking really good. So funny. Well, we were. I, so I at that point, I figured, okay, if we get Ryan on, man, if we get him on before the turn of the turn of the next century, we killed it, buddy. Like our podcast has hit it because, like, he's putting us off three months. That's awesome. Fantastic, guys. So, anyway, yeah, that's the best go. introduction I can do for you because the rest of it is up to you. Let us know who you are, what you're doing, yeah. where you came from. And then I do, honestly, you know what the main purpose, I think, Phil, I just wanted to pick your brains. Yeah. yeah because sure, you're on the cool sure. side, right? You're on a yeah. side where you get to see different things that we might. Yeah. So that's what it, that's simple as that. That's, that's exciting, guys. And I love it. Um, so, you know, to roll back to the very beginning, I was, uh, you know, I'm not a very smart guy. I was very lucky. I got a lucky phone call and um, a company called Teldon had acquired this, this magazine called Alive. We've been around a long time, but very small. This is 16 years ago. And I was 26 years old. And this fellow phoned me up and he said, Hey, I got this magazine and it's losing money. And I don't really know, but I hear you're a, you're a little whippersnapper. Do you want to come run it? Short and long story was yes. And so I joined Alive as the president 16 and a half years ago. And as much as it was, it was good timing. That was right around, just so you guys have like a stake of reference. It was like six months later that Whole Foods bought capers. Like they, that was kind of like that moment okay. in time. So all of a sudden you have this brand alive. We have a URL alive.com. We got a live Academy and we were just, you know, we we're the biggest small magazine you'd ever heard of. And we kind of just rode the wave of, of health all the way through. And it made me look really good. And then I grew up in the parent company, which was Teldon. So about four years later, I took over as executive vice president of the whole company. Then I took over as CEO about a decade ago. And, you know, Teldon was a much more significant business. So that's, uh, it was the biggest commercial printer in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, oh, wow. Anytime you get a calendar from somebody that comes from them, they do about 30 million calendars a year. Okay. And then we had the publishing division. I was running all three with about 180 employees. And uh, that would have been about 100, 120 million in revenue kind of business, like in that kind of scope. And nice. did, yeah, yeah, it was great. And then that's did nice. that all the way through until... And, uh, and, and touching on the ownership that you said there, Kenny, I was a higher gun, so I had no ownership, but then uh, bought in as I moved along. So I ended up with uh, with a minority share in the business, which was great. 
And, uh, and then two years, a year and a half ago, we ended up selling a live and, and I went with that business exclusively and, but was given the rights to continue running Teldon for about another year. And in that process, we actually sold Teldon too. So we basically split the business apart, wow. sold off the pieces. And I find myself ironically, 16 years later in the exact same seat, president of Alive, 35 employees, really awesome. And that's and fantastic. Deep, yeah. What I'm passionate about. Right. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah, really that exciting. is pretty cool. That is yeah. Pretty cool. So I've got, you know, so general business is almost where I've gone now. Like I bought seven companies, sold three, mm-hmm. um, you know, gone through a couple of bankruptcies and divestitures and helping people with that. I'm the right now I'm actually the uh, chair of uh, the BC chapter of uh, young presidents organization. So that's a, that's a big responsibility and a, and, a, and a great opportunity. So towards the end of my volunteer time there, and I've done seven not-for-profit boards. I currently sit, sit on six boards for other wow. uh, for-profit enterprises. So a lot of my time just spent in the boardroom and strategy, et cetera. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Wow. Wow. Not Fantastic. really. He's a busy guy. Yeah, busy for sure. But, you know, the claim to fame, not very smart. I just sit around and yak all the time like this. So this is like when you guys invited me on, I was so excited. I'm like, I get to do what I do best. I just get to <laughs> Lab on and this is this is why Kenny and I like doing this, right? <laughs> yeah. that's what, this is it, just the mental capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That, this is where the three are it. peaking. We're yeah. peaking at the same time right now. Man. That's awesome. And man. plus, what else would you want to do in life? So you get paid to talk. I mean, seriously. Yeah, this is fantastic stuff. It's exactly right. Yeah, that's a it's, winner, winner, chicken dinner, man. That's all that's yeah. good. It's such and a I mean, I guess from the business side now, for so from yeah. industry and business, you know, I was chair of the Canadian Health Food Association or vice chair, I should say, for, for a few years. Um and uh, Alive is now probably the largest health and wellness publisher in the world. So we do, which doesn't make it very big, but it's, uh, you know, we have five magazines, three in the US, two in Canada. Okay. You know, we do a little bit of education, do a lot of research and consumer insights and stuff. So yeah, yeah we managed to be really lucky. People ask all the time, they're like, how's the publishing business? And I say, shit, thank goodness we're not a publisher. We're a natural health company. And of course, it's a bit of a lie. It's a bit of a stretch from a vision statement, you know, most of our money is still made by ink on paper, mm-hmm. but we really position ourselves as like a strategic partner for brands and retailers to help them grow. Yeah, it's an interesting place to be, right? Like, I mean, 16, well, the the time that you've been on the business, I mean, like fundamental changes in the way we consume media, right? Like all of this stuff from going from print to, to digital and you know, a little bit and back, back again, and then back again, and back yeah. Again. yeah. Kind of yeah. like albums yeah. did, yeah, 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 crazy. And then, you know. and also people, right? Like when I first started, you know, we we referenced our little podcast that we're throwing because we we're bored in COVID. But you know, it was you know Kenny and Phil and and Matt Breach and Richard Pollock and mm-hmm. like everybody had a name. Mm-hmm. Our right. biggest customers were were them, right? Like I would phone Richard and I would phone Charles and mm-hmm. that's who you were phoning. You're phoning Stuart Brown at Genuine Health. And, right. and, and now I phone <clears throat> Nestle, Procter & Gamble, Clorox, right? Like that, that, that's our customer base now. Yeah. 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 And it was just, just, so seeing that migration alone is like unbelievable to see it move from this, like quite personal, you know, business to you know it's it's it's, a, it's an industry it's a major industry yeah, are you finding that are you fine uh, that's obviously where it was it had to go there if, if it was going to grow i remember <clears throat> we started going to expo 22 23 years ago when i started going right because we were in the you know we were the devil side we, we nobody wanted us at natural shows totally. right so i mean there's years where nobody would talk to me i would let's sit at booze and okay, whatever <laughs> well i mean i look at things and you learn stuff but nobody wanted to talk to us right but it was a different, it was definitely a different time. And then the big companies came in, changed the game quite substantially. Are you finding it sort of going, is, is there, a, it, there's never going to be a migration back because the Nestle's, the Unilever's, et cetera, are, are in, they are in to stay. And I think they've right. realized you can make money in natural channel. You can make a lot of money in the natural channel mm-hmm. and right. it's a place to be. It's better for everybody. It's better for us. It's better for the planet. It's in general, it's better for everything. So good place to be, but are you finding it's, did you feel that's the continuation of this or do you, do you, are you seeing anything? Cause it's like Phil said, 16 years ago and today are almost in this funny, in the same spot in a lot of ways. It's weird, right? Because you went from publishing when it wasn't that important. I find people have gone back to hardcover books. I don't know right. if magazines have gone up, but there's yeah, definitely yeah. a trend back to those things. You know, we went from digital like CDs. 
now we're playing Spotify, obviously, but albums are big. Like, I'm just wondering if it's the same thing in our industry. Are you finding? Yeah, probably a couple of questions there. The media side, let me, let me, you know, riff on that one first. You know, we've chased it too. So everywhere, basically our entire modeling business was we're going to go wherever our customers are going. So first that was like geographic, like, and, and I, you know, everybody uses the story of Vega, you know, everybody was best friends with Vega. Um, and, but, you know, they're our neighbor and they were a good partner of ours. And, and, you know, I'm talking to Charles and I'm watching what he's doing with this explosive growth. And, you know, first it was health food stores in Canada. Right. And then they said, you know, listen, like we've, we need to grow, you know, we have a responsibility to grow and we need to access and help as many people as we can with our products. And so we need to take it to a, to a broader channel. So they went food, drug, mass. So we said, Hey, we should probably go food, drug, mass. If they're doing that, that probably makes sense for us. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that was saved with Loblaws. And then, you know, two years later they go, Hey, you know, we're going to take a crack at the U S and we're like, well, if you're going to the U S we should probably go to the U S. So guess what we did? We went to the U S and you know, then we're down in the U S and they go, Hey, guess what? We got to go food, drug, and mass in the U S. So thank goodness for Charles and Vega and, and, and showing us the way, but that's, you know, virtually the pattern that we took. So that was kind of that geographic expansion from a channel perspective, meaning media channel, right. You know, it's really interesting because everybody's dabbling with it and we've all got, you know, young influencers in our life, et cetera. But I think what's coming around is every category is different. If you're buying an automobile, you know, the internet's really good. You know, like I love sitting around on my couch and building a car online because I can build a car online and, you know, responding to the marketing and watching videos and going, you know, this, this, this is pretty good. Like I, I, I probably don't need a dealership. I'm pretty certain I could build my car, hit enter and do it no different than I would do on Amazon. Right. Yeah. But I think what the journey is that they found in health and, and interestingly, I think all the major, major CPGs know this already, but they kind of forgot it in the process is, you know, where is health spec in the, in, in a traditional health, where is it spec in the journey? And it's spec with a pharmacist and a doctor. It's not spec online, very outside of maybe very, very tight little area, like mm, new mothers, like baby, right. little, like babycenter.com and, you know, shared and blogging, that kind of thing in a very tight little space and time. But, you know, outside of doing some probably very damaging research online, generally it's then doctor, pharmacist, and then consumption of some form of a, of a product. Mm. And then, you know, our industry goes through and go, no, 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 you know, we're, we're going to be different than that. We're going to go. And we're going to, we're going to bypass the retailer. We're going to bypass the professional. We're going to bypass the authorities. And you know what, we're going to, we're going to sell all of our products by, you know, using an influencer on Instagram. And he like, amazingly, it didn't work. People are like, they don't, they don't decide what they're going to give their child when they're sick with a cold and flu, or they want to present, or they have low blood sugar or, or name ailment. And amazingly, an influencer actually doesn't have that much impact on purchasing. So all of this investment over time, which I don't belittle anybody for, we did it too, but of like, how can we influence online tended to fall short on results, not necessarily meaning that radio or television or traditional communications or print um, was any kind of a darling, but all of a sudden people went, wow, that actually worked and this doesn't. So we've just recently, the last two, three years, and not because again, it's anything superior. We're just finding that a bunch of people are actually coming back to traditional because traditional works better. It's literally what it is. It's, it's not that it is better. It just works better because people trust it. Health is a trusted thing. People don't put stuff in their body. They don't really research. It's an authority. So they go to trusted sources and trusted sources are pharmacists, doctors, naturopaths, you know, print literature. It is what it is. I mean, function of, sorry, Phil, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Well, huh. yeah, I, I guess the, the thing with the influencers is you, you know, there, there's just so much more work to be trusted. Right. And, and most influencers aren't doing that work. So if it's for something visible, you know, apparel, furniture, those sort of things, there's, there's a pretty low bar, right? Like, you know, totally. it looks great. It looks great. Feels great. They look pretty happy. I'm good. Right. But I don't know you from anybody, right? Like, <laughs> You know, like in the middle of the night, I'm not going to Instagram to see what's going on. I'm I'm thinking about the things that I read, that I processed, right? That, you know, educationally will help me figure out what my child needs, right? In the middle of the night, right? Like you. For sure, and you know, it's like it's like you said too. It's just a barrier. It's about this health thing. So, yeah. and even inside health, I can even create different yeah. layers. Like where you have sampling, etc. Like food. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how much you need to read about food if you're thinking about 
you know, our good buddy, Ian Walker and left coast naturals and, you know, hippie snacks. And, and if an influencer come on, comes on there and says like, like I freaking love these chips. Yeah. You know what? People might be like, that's a really good idea. Like that's yeah. different when you're then saying something though, you know, should I be taking 2000 or 3000 micro uh, milligrams of vitamin D? You know, I don't think an influencer is going to weigh a lot into that spectrum. And, and actually who does in, in, in all our research is, you know, I'd love to say that it's, you know, alive and brand and all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we all have it. And I always say, you know, go to the focus group of one and then prove it wrong. What, what do you do or what does your partner do or what does your family member do yeah. when they have a question about health? They phone somebody. They are amazingly, sometimes it's them, but there's always that one gatekeeper of health in the bigger sphere. And it's like, right. you know, a lot of times for us boys, it started with our moms. But then now, you know, my mom goes to my wife you know, my stepmom, her mom goes to her, her sisters go to her. And that's the phone that rings all the time is, like, hey, you know, we're really down and out here. Like, what do you recommend? What brand even forget even what product, like what brand? Right. So now all of a sudden, she's in that position. And then what we're trying to figure out is, okay, well, that now you've already found out it's reference, reference, recommendation, right? This is mm-hmm. where it's going on this product mm-hmm. side. And even what store are you shopping at? Right? Like, where should I go? Where do I where do you get that? So do you know where that's available? That's great. Thank you for that. Where do you get it? Mm -hmm. And the interesting part then is where do they get their info? Where does that one person? That's what we try to have a play. That's that's like essentially our entire focus is how do we find the super recommenders and make sure we're an important part of their lives? Not how are we a part of 80% of all North Americans lives who are buying, you know, health and wellness supplements, et cetera. Right. Yeah. I, I find it, I, it's interesting because I think I sometimes wonder though, how much it has to do with, um, you got to do it this way. Like when you're talking, we talk about whether it's furniture, clothing, sneakers, an 18 year old, a 15 year old can go online and be influenced by whomever, let's say it's a Jordan, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Ryan Ben wearing a cool hat, whatever it is, but that, those are low, low impact, ma- not massive detriment to my life. I don't have to worry about it. There are those people under the 30 aren't into health the way that we would be as you get older. Cause when you get older, you really start to have to think it's not about eating healthy food or taking an extra supplement. What is it doing with the other meds you're on? Totally. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole different set of things. I wonder if it's just the bubble we're in right now because the 45 to 65 year old who's probably got the, the latest, the, the health problems are coming now Mm-hmm. we're more i'm gonna fool my farm like i got pharmacist buddy from london drug still i phone my pharmacist friends 100 why well, who else am i going to talk to i can get to I mean, them easier the, and they know as much the, they know more about medicine than doctors do they totally. do right yes, so, the most, and, and they're the most trusted uh, health so, professional in the world for a reason so go to them first right but what happens in 10 years like when my kids like my kids are 26 and 24 right they're healthy kids they like their health food etc they are influenced by certain things how to eat definitively yeah. by star athletes and, and mm-hmm. things like that. But, you know, do you think they're worried about, you know, Hey, well, well, vitamin D lower cholesterol is what, what is What is cholesterol? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, I think it's, I wonder if it, in 20 years, like where are they going to go? Are they the group that can be influenced by influencers or are they still going to be like us and phoning a pharmacist? Cause I don't even think my kids have been in a pharmacy. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating, isn't it? And, and it's, I guess that's the million dollar question. The only answer I can have for it is, you know, and again, for all listeners, because they they have no scope here. I'm, you know, 42 years old. I've been at it for 16 years. And so, you know, ironically, like to think of myself a little bit like a kid still. And, but 16 years ago, you imagine I'm 26 years old. I'm taking over a, a dying magazine with the biggest commercial printer in the Pacific Northwest and a calendar company. And, and my friends are death going on death on death on death. Like, and I'm still wearing cool hats and have a tattoo. And my friends are like, dude, yeah. what are you doing? Like, yeah. like, like you must be the biggest idiot. And I'm like, yeah, listen, it's probably three years out, but you know, it's a great opportunity and let's yeah. see what we can do. And then guess what I said? Three years later, I said, listen, guys, it's probably three years out, but you know, let's see what we can do. And you know, it's 16 years. And guess what I said in our strategic planning two weeks ago? Hey, listen, guys, like, I don't know. It might be three years out, but I've been saying it's going to be three years out seven exactly. times over. Like, I, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. So for us, I mean, I belittle our own company, but, you know, alive, a tremendous amount of what we put invested in is brand. You know, we're almost omnipresent. You know, we've got 15 million readers a month. It's, you know, it's pretty sizable now in terms of its scope. That's and huge. Exposure. You know, alive.com, we gloss over it, but, you know, it's one of the largest health and wellness sites in the world. Great URL. 
you know, the research, et cetera. So it's multifaceted media. And I think that's the key part now is, you know, Ryan Holmes taught me this going back a ways ago. And, and for the listeners, you know, Ryan is, uh, is Hootsuite. He's probably one of the, you know, most foremost social media thinkers, thought leaders. And he said like 10 years ago when he was, you know, a little bit into his journey at Hootsuite, but you know, he was, he was getting close to a unicorn at that point. And his lecture to us at our live summit, uh, the summary of it basically was, you know, people who think of social media, like a marketing tool, don't get it. Social media is like your receptionist. You have to have it. You better answer it when somebody comes knocking at the door and the expectation is quick turnaround. And it was this little bit of a wow moment for me where it was like, people were looking at it as the next thing. And he's like, you're already too late. It's not the next thing. It is just one of the things now. You have to have social media. You have to talk to your audience there. You have to deal with it. You have to have a website. You have to have a cell phone. You have yeah, to have table email, stakes, right? And you have it's, to have marketing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and it needs to become Marty of marketing mix. But his main statement then was people who said, my social media strategy, he's like, there is no such thing as a social media strategy. There is a marketing strategy of which you have social media tactics. Exactly. It's really interesting. And he was really really riddled it down. But at that time, that was a little revolutionary. Because I remember at that time, everybody was looking at it as marketing. Like not a marketing tool, not a function of, not a Like little companies actually build an entire, they're attempting to build an entire business based on on Instagram. Social media, and you kind of go like, or yeah, guys, come on, like it's it doesn't not, work quite like that, right? No. It's not that. No. Like, now, ironically, there are fast forward all the way through, and there actually yeah. are businesses that are built on social yeah. media now, for sure. Agreed. But that's because we now have an ability to have a social media shopping cart, yeah. right? So you, you have an Instacart. You can do. You can have a full cycle of business. You can do, you can do it all. I can. Tw- Ten years ago, could you buy on Instagram? No, no. Did you even see anything on Instagram from sponsored people? Ten years ago, did you buy? Did you buy on Amazon? Basically, like you were like that was rare occurrence, right? Like yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. No. So so it was a real delinkage at that point, and now people right. really. It's just evolved, and and now there's a place for right. all of it, and, and nothing makes me happier than when Facebook phones up and they take an ad in the live because they want to drive people to Facebook. How cool is that? Eh? So it's awesome. So what's your like? Because I'm I'm so, I think this part for our listeners is is probably a real curiosity right because you've you've got a mix of online and print like what i you know without giving away trade seekers but what's your like what's your mix like because i'm i'm so curious like you know the the misconception is that you know print is dead and everyone's gone online but but it's really not true is it no and i'd say like you know i'm pretty open so we'll get pretty much close to every trade secret that we have but Let's take for granted that most of our advertisers are the big boys. They're they're actually the big CPG. So so they're still under brands like Garden of Life and you know Natural Factors, who's independent, mm-hmm. of course. But you know the vast majority of Garden of Life is Nestle and you know yeah. you know, known and yeah. for Mega and like it, it or now just changed. But you know so that's kind of the the journey we're on. We are very strategic partners of all of those major CPGs very strategic. Like we would be one of their single largest spends for not Nasly, but for Garden of Life. And they are very smart people. So they're doing it for a reason. Ironically, our journey with these customers generally went, you know, small independent. Let's use Vega again. Vega, great advertiser. Sells, not as good of advertiser. It goes into CPG world. CPG goes, no, 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 we don't do it this way. We do it this way. So we're not going to do it. We're not going to advertise. Or if we do, we're going to do the bare line minimum. Follow it through six years later, they go, wow, this was actually hyper effective. Biggest advertiser. So, I mean, all you have to do is open our mag. That's why it's not really a trade secret. You open it up and you see who's in there and you go, wow, well, that's really interesting. So these big boys are actually the ones who, what's happened is the small boys have our trail. And this is classic retail too, right? Like you guys will know this too, yeah. right? All food stores constantly chasing you know, Loblaws. Right. Meanwhile, Loblaws is actually going, well, what are we trying to do? We're actually trying to create a store within a store to replicate a health food yep. store. Yep. Meanwhile, the health food store is trying to say, <laughs> well, we want to become like Loblaws and Loblaws is sitting yeah, here going, yeah. this is crazy. Like you yeah. guys have it all. You have community, you have relationships, yeah, yeah, you have yeah, margin, yeah. you've got novelty, you can innovate products, you can launch. Yeah. And health food stores are like, that's not what I need to be. I need yeah, to be low cost but, and convenient. Yeah. And you go, gosh, it's crazy. So I, yeah. I talked to a lot about, you know, playing to your strengths. 
So ironically, the little manufacturers, little now, little in comparison to the big CPGs, guess what they're doing? They're like five years behind the cycle. And the, and the big CPG is, is heavy in print. And the little guys are like, no, 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 we're going to spend all our money online and we're going to create our own communities and we're going to do our own content strategy. And, and people are going to love to come to my Instagram and I'm going to spend $300,000 a year building Instagram content and I'm going to get 17 people like it. <laughs> and then they'll realize that, that was a bad idea and probably look at an integrated media approach. And, you know, it's, again, it's not meant to sell or disseminate. I think there's a place for everything, but that's yeah. the cycle we've kind of seen. And yeah. most people, I mean, you could almost just open up in a live magazine from, you know, one a year for the last six years. And, and, and that strategy would become apparent. So with the big guys, is it just like, cause, cause you like a live online, for example, has some really cool articles. So like with the big guys, like, like a, a Unilever, for example, is that, is it just advertising or how, like, what does the partnership you look like? Right. Cause like we, yeah. we have a mix of like people that are, you know, big and small. And so maybe the big people are going, guys, don't you get it? We do this with a live, but I'm just wondering, like, cause I think that would also help, you know, kind of blow this up a little. So people understand, like, so if Unilever were to do a partnership with you, is it just about running ads in, in magazines or is there more to it? Like, do they build their content strategy? Do they kind of share that with you? Do you help them build content? Sure. You know, all yeah, those sort of sure. things. Yeah. So again, because I don't really think there's yeah. many competitors left for us. There's like, there's competitors for every component of what right. we do, but yeah. from the perspective of partner, it's a little bit different. We're, in, okay. we're in, a, in a blessed place with that. So I, I don't really mind sharing it all. So oh. the a very, very bad analogy uh -huh. Very good analogy, but a bad example is McDonald's. When you go through a drive-through for McDonald's and you go, I'm going to get a Big Mac meal. Mm -hmm. And they go, okay, you're going to get a Big Mac meal. And they're like, what size fries? You know, what kind of, what kind of burger do you want? What kind of soda do you want? You get there at the very end. When you pull up to the drive-through, it's really hard for you to go, you know, actually, I'm curious, what does each one of those cost? And they're like, no, 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 your meal is $8.99. If, if you want to yeah. buy them individually, they're going to be $14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so these things are bundled up into this package. And, and we all know that they make all their money on the soda because the soda costs them 10 cents and that's lumped in and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, they've lumped it all together because they said, we want you to have the full meal experience, pun intended, right? right. And a live is ultimately not that much different. And then now to tell you what our levers are, like what are our fries, burger, and soda is? We kind of have seven things and we bundle them all in. And generally, most of the big customers now want all seven. They want to come to you and say, I want one or two of them. And we say, you don't get one or two. Simple. It was a really hard lesson for us to learn was to say, we're actually not going to sell you just one or two because they're not going to work. It only works when you put them all together. We will sell you only one or two, but it's going to be so exorbitantly expensive. You're going to go, well, that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the buckets for us are print media, consumer insights, online display advertising, direct to consumer. And then when we get, so those are always bundled together for sure. Mm -hmm. Then we start to go on the print media and on the online channel specific. So do you want mass and, re, and, and independent right. or one of those two? That's okay. If they're only one channel, the other, that's all right. But generally most people are omni-channel now. So they're going with everything. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of the real magic for us is when they start going, well, what are we going to do for our own content on our website? We're looking at a direct to consumer strategy. The biggest challenge most of the brands face is that independent, well thought content, no matter whether the content is online, videos, webinars, education, or just plain old marketing, they don't have it. So probably now our fastest growing by far, and I'm not afraid to say for the last three years and is now flirting with 40% of our entire business is custom publishing stuff we do for the major CPGs that you don't even see our brand on. Wow. Nothing. So you'll just right. see a tiny little thing that's like published yeah. by a lot of publishing. So like, as an example, I, think they're, I, I hope they're going to be totally okay with it. We just did, you know, we just published the last book for ancient nutrition. So Jordan and Josh Axe, you know, here's all of their writing, breakout phone call, a couple of things. We took it all. We made an 84 page book out of it designed it, built it, branded it, printed it, shipped them 200,000 copies. They're giving those away for gift with purchase for customers. Wow. 
Wow. So that's it, you know, and it was all yeah. our content. It was, I shouldn't yeah. say a lot of it. It was actually a lot of their content, but it's well, our assuming, yeah, But it's your writers, it's your writing, expertise. You're putting it together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. packaging yeah. it in a way that yeah. I'm going to be interested as a consumer yeah. to look at it, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, so unbranded by us. And we do, you know, everything from like brochures, educational videos. Oh, you really busted out, eh? That's a... Yeah. It, it's, it's a funny that's thing, a right? Because like, like I have clients on the B2B side, right? And on the B2B side, you're used to this, right? Like you're used to... Like I've worked in biometrics and, you know, all those sort of things. And so you get people who show up and do full service. They do white papers, they do, you know, like case yeah. studies Ooh. and all that kind of stuff. But I never thought of the CPG world in the same sort of context, but it actually makes sense to me. It's actually kind of genius. Really. It's actually it's, big it's boy, actually, yeah. the big boys, right? And if yeah. you think about it, like, you know, giving you examples without telling you who, but you know, your pharma does a magazine. Garden of Life does a magazine. Mm -hmm. Ancient Nutrition used to and probably will do a magazine again. Um, I'm probably missing more in the mix, but you, you know, you're getting the idea. Right. Of, like, they're, they're doing major branding consumer. And if you think about it, you know, like BMW, Air Canada, mm -hmm. you know, this is a very common thread mm -hmm. of, you know, there's jewelry stores who literally do their own magazines. There's, you know, Hugo Boss magazine. There's, you know, you name it that are, you know, info mags. And it's a, the, the preeminent brands of almost anything. Like I love my, you know, BMW magazine that shows up quarterly or my Air Canada magazine that shows up. And, you know, we're trying to help brands to get to that level of echelon where people are excited actually about getting their Garden of Life magazine show up instead of, oh, I got a Garden of Life flyer show up. I'm yeah, not like, right, right. flyer, I'm a flyer. You know, so like, and our argument is you guys, for such a small difference, we can take that from, you know, a 10% increase in your spend can take it from meh to holy, this is really substantial. This is like really awesome. Thank you. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of cool. I hadn't thought of it like that, but it, yeah, it's, it's pretty brilliant. That's, it's kind of awesome. So we're doing that. And then that embeds us in the strategy, right? So then we yeah. do like our live summit. And so, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff I do now is travel around and, you know, talk to these guys in their strategic planning sessions. So we do everything from, you know, our conversations with, with the executives at a lot of these CPGs are, you know, here's the products we're thinking about launching, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Here's our channel yeah. strategy. What are your yeah. thoughts? Because, you know, we have guys, you know, scope, you know, obviously we know more about the consumers than any brand does for sure, because yeah. we just, we're bigger than any brand. It sounds crazy, but we're bigger than Nestle and health food, right? Like we're like, we know the health food consumer right. as well as anybody. Yeah. And, you know, 5,000 stores buy our magazines now, 5,000 stores buy the magazine. So when you, you think about the amount of aggregate data that we're pulling in on, which stores are just every single retailer, how many are they buying? When do they do? How do they do? All the phone calls, all the lectures, all the consumer insights that we're getting. Then we deal with all the manufacturers too. And when you aggregate pretty much every retailer who's in this channel, most consumers in the channel and pretty much every single manufacturer in the channel, we end up becoming this funny little cog in the wheel. And I mean, oh, guys, all things in scope, right? This is a small business. We're 35 employees. But it's fascinating that we end up having all of these relationships and these interactions. So a brand launches and they go, you know, we're the, we're the Kenny Venucci connector now, right? It's, it's that one that got me introduced to you, Ken. Like, we've got 500 of those now. So if somebody's like, I got to get into fresh time markets. They're like, what do we do? We, we don't even, we have this great product and we want to advertise and we're doing really yeah. well, but I got to get into fresh time markets in the U S how do I get to them? They phone alive and we go, yeah, we'll make one phone call for you. Yeah. Yeah. We and know those probably guys. get to the yeah, top yeah, of the yeah. list. And, 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 yeah, and yeah. a guy like Kenny answers the phone yeah. and goes, Hey Ryan, that's awesome for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me about them. Yeah. Tell, give me my yeah. email. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you think they're good, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. Let yeah. me take a look. And so we play That's this funny cool. little role, funny little, almost like incubator kind of role. But, for but, the but, many but it's really ironic, right? Because you, you, um, the thing that we all wanted the internet to do is getting done old school. Was it, that's what that's what you I'm trying to, when I listen to all the like thing, all of the data all the that we, we thought the, the internet's going to give us everything right like all yeah. like we're you know grab, and you're getting it all like, old school yeah, still yeah, I mean you're a mix up actually, but and I love it like, didn't I, leave. I, I think this is it. fascinating yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and it's like you know my biggest concern for the industry this is this is a grateful circle conversation because it's, yeah. it's 
it, it was the second part of the question you asked earlier, Kenny, that, you know, where's the whole thing going? Yeah. I really only have one concern because you were like, you know, it's all gone CPG, but is there a place for it? That was that question that, that we never got. Is, is there a place for small guys, both sides, there, the vendor really side is. and the retail side? My concern is that big business at no intentional fault of their own, but big business can potentially crush our industry. And, and what I mean by that, and this is not big, bad cop. This is not people that come out and crush us like they're intentionally doing it. It's just that the big CPG is working with big retail and they have a way of taking product to market. <clears throat> yes. But the one thing that gets lost in that entire, in that entire, in my, my feeling food chain, it's what made food bad today. It's all the same. Like, Right. Shreddies are still shreddies. Like it's it, like, it's still the same shit in the same box on the same shelf yeah. because retailers are like, we don't know what else to do. CPG is having a really hard time. And to get into that like mass scale, particularly in the U S but to get to that mass scale, you know, you gotta, you gotta go through independent innovation, growth scale. Right. And then all of a sudden you get big enough that but that doesn't happen. Know, that can't happen with big guys because they're already up there. It's, the whole steps are all gone. So if you don't have yeah. the, the innovative retailers supporting innovative product introductions, yeah. it's, it, we're just going to go the exact same way as CPG before, which will be, you have four different proteins on the shelf. You have three different vitamin C's and the biggest wins, and that's the end of it. But when you have this like vibrant retail network, that retail network allows for innovation because they can educate, but you know, listen, like Loblaws, they, they can't educate. They, they can't educate on anything. Like, this is They're like, also not innovative. They're not built for it. The, the, the buyers don't totally. think that. The, the buyers of today in any of the majors are, you know, sorry, friends, are, are become useless. Nobody right. takes chances. Unless there's a bucket yeah, but, of money but, attached but it's to it, also, nobody's it's, looking. But it's the trying. model, right? Like they don't, they also can't afford to take chances. Like no. when you, when you have, when you have, you know, kind of 20 SKUs that make up all of the volume on your shelf, what chances can you take exactly, right? Like you're, you're looking, you know, every year margins get a little bit thinner. Do you know what I mean? Like penny profit gets a bit tougher. So these sure. guys are going. Like, but it's not going to come from the big guys though. Like, that's, like that's it's cool problem. that I'm a buyer and I, I own a hundred, you know, a hundred million dollars, 150 million in the category, but I'm scared to death that I'm not going to get the profit number that someone's going to knock at my door and go, where the fuck is the other 5 million bucks you owe me, right? hundred percent. So my, my only, you know, like caution for industry. And I believe yeah. that, you know, economics wins over all the time. And so I believe that innovation will stay and small will always have a yeah. place. And, and, and yeah. I believe that because people desire it and therefore yeah. it'll be there. But my own, my concern is just the awareness that I try to heighten people's ultimate awareness and go, guys, just remember, like, like it's a, there's a really great case study right now. Amazon bought Whole Foods because Whole Foods was awesome. Great. Like right. I have no problem with that. Some people have problem with that. I'm, I'm a, I'm, you know, listen, I'm like, I'm good. I, I like, that is how business works. Vega got sold because it was successful. That is awesome. If more people can have Vega because of that. Awesome. That is awesome. These are all good things. That's the journey we want to take. We just want to make sure that a new Vega starts and 15 later, years later, that happens again. Right. So when I saw Amazon buy Whole Foods, you're like, this is fantastic. But the problem is Whole Foods is starting to become Amazon. Exactly. And now all of a sudden, what, what Whole Foods launched our, our industry effectively, like, like that literally, like all that copy. retailer, all that strength of that retailer and that innovation was like, wait a second, that paved the way for successful independent retail, Absolutely. whether it was Sprouts or Fresh Time or, yeah. Or, yeah. or Capers or whatever, like it all came out of that. And then now all of a sudden, exactly what made this entire industry successful is migrating towards what they bought in the first place. Like the, Amazon bought it because they were amazing and are turning it into Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes it yeah. inevitable, right? And I think I think that's ultimately where my worry goes is that you're going to have six retailers and six CPG companies and that's 90% of our business. And you know what you get with that? Fuck all. You, you get, get a bunch of fucking humdrum, boring products, no innovation. You get box changes, uh, maybe a color change, size change. I'll hold your price, but I'll take 50 grams off next but, year. Like it's boring. But, it, but it's, it's, I, I don't, I think so the rare times I think that Kenny and I disagree, but I disagree. Cause I, I think it's, you can definitely see that happening, but I also see the flip side of it is like, even on the show, we've heard people 
on brands that have come come on and said, look, the <clears> economics <throat> don't work. Like I'm a little brand. I, I really want to be in Loblaws. I'm not going to Loblaws because there's no world in in no circumstances the economics going to work for me. Is that them so, telling us Phil or us telling them? I, it's both, right? But but I think that also like you know to what Ryan hopes is going to happen is I I think this cycle is going to continue because you've got little brands that need little places to go, right? Like we've we've met up like easily a hundred brands on the show that are like that, and and they need places to go, and the retailers that they go to need those brands, right? So I think it's you just need to have the retailers there to go to. The problem you're having though is when eighty percent of our food distribution in the country is three guys, four Isabel. guys, let's say. Let's yeah, say it's Metro, yeah. five. Metro, Walmart, Loblaws, Sobeys, and Sobeys, let's say Overweighted yeah. Food Group. That's yeah. it. I mean, honestly, that's 89% of the food distribution in the country, right? If those guys don't take it, it's very difficult. Unless you unless you can be, unless you can change your world. See, Ryan's, Ryan's a phenomenal cook, right? He's a chef too. He loves food like you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he, he's another Solid. freak. Like, that's all we talk about. We love food. I mean, we, honestly, we could eat all day, every day. Oh, so let's I talk food. I love food. Let's forget this this so, this heavy topic. Let's talk food. Yeah. I, so I got all excited because you've already probably yeah. seen it. I know Phil. So I started watching. I don't know why I did it there. I started watching Chef Table. Oh, so it's good. not even new, right? So yeah. it's, it's been out for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. the one episode, and I can't remember his name. Is Dan Barber? That's a guess. Because Phil, I did the other day. I came up the name. Yeah, he he gave me this. Anyway, like this Scott guy Fitz William. I was like, uh, there's no Scott's William. Like, what? What Go else? find the episode I'm talking about. <laughs> that fucking Dan guy, whatever his name is. Anyway, he, right? He's the guy that what had um, his grandmother owned the farm or something to that effect. And what he his basic conclusion, sort of what you just said, is is what happened to the like, food? For example, food became Dan Barber. all about Dan Barber, all about commodity. And about yeah. getting as much out as humanly possible. So you went away from knowing who the farmer of the pigs were. Correct. And knowing how that farmer raised their pigs to just being from Maple Leaf or Tyson or whomever. Like you went from, and, and what happened Ooh. is all the cool food that, that they fed the pigs is yeah. gone. And now it's just shit that they're feeding the pigs today. And you wonder why the it. meat's not the right color or it doesn't taste like anything anymore. And to me, it's funny because I got all hyperactive this week on this, right? Because I told Phil, so I'm going online trying to find the 100 mile diet, right? But I'm not looking for the diet. I'm thinking if I type in 100 mile diet Vancouver, because we've been talking about this for 10 years, I'm going to get all the retailers that I should go to. Like th the butchers are going to come up, the produce guys. Good luck. Oh, yeah, no. Good luck. No, no. So but it's the way it should be. And I believe in that. And I do, uh, you know, I'm somewhere between the two. I actually am glass half full. I believe that consumers are becoming enlightened. And, you know, this is interesting. Like you want to talk about, you know, generationally, like you just self-admittedly there, Kenny said you have, you know, a couple of kids in the twenties. Well, absolutely. You know, I'm way older getting, both of you. They're getting pretty enlightened, right? They're getting pretty enlightened. And, and, and these kids are getting pretty smart and they're starting to see through some of this stuff and say, absolutely. No, you know what? I'm going to farmer's markets. Like they're, yeah. they're successful as they've ever been. And, you yeah. know, we're looking at, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to buy our fruit and vegetables from, you know, a community supported agriculture. And, you know, so there's, there's, there's definitely that awareness coming in and I'm hopeful that the understanding of it, I would, I, my big wish, I guess would be is where I was starting with all of this is that the big boys on both retail and manufacturer actually were aware enough or the decisions came from people aware enough that they actually said, no, we need to actually invest in independent retail. That's very important for us still as Nestle to make sure that we really support independent retail because that's actually good for our business. Right. We, although 90% of our volume comes through five retailers in Canada, mm -hmm. we have to actually really support the other 10% or else we're never going to be able to launch a product again. And we're, there's going to be no brands to buy because exactly. they won't have been able to launch. Yeah. That's what my hope is. So and I think my fear is, and that's why I went back to it. I do think it's going to be six CPG, six retailers. Let's say that happens. Yeah. And doing 90%, there's still 10% though. And that's, that's the 10% right. that hopefully that three of us, you know, as you get a little older, you get a little more affluent, et cetera, we'll support that. Because totally. that is, if that dies, then it is dead. It's going to be a shitty system. But if you, you start it. thinking about it, you know, because I'm older than both of you, my age group is the one that is now starting to think, you know what, as cool as it was walking these big stores five, 10 years ago, and this big company and all this 
buying and consolidation was really cool to watch. It's not really good for anything at the end of the day. It's good for a lot of things, but you know what? It's really not that good for a lot of things. Yeah, We're totally. losing a lot of, there's competitions gone to shit. Um, selections gone to shit to what we're, what we're all saying now. Right. So my age group is now thinking, you know what? I don't know if I like this game as much as I thought I did. I'll support it for, for the, for some parts because I got no choice. I got to get some stuff. It's easy peasy, but I'm totally. going to start hunting for different people. I'm going to go find well, the cool guy again. It's funny. It's little things like, and I love that hunt. And I mean, you guys are retail it, it, and you know, I love going into great grocery stores, like nothing's better anywhere in the world. I do a ton of travel, mm-hmm. um, I love about earlier, but vacation travel, right. Food yeah. and vacation. I mean, that's love my grocery life. stores. And like, I love going in. Like I like, first thing I do, we land in Budapest. I'm like, let's go to a grocery store because you can learn about an yeah. entire 100%. civilization by just yeah. going to see what's on the shelf, who is yeah. there and what yeah, are they buying. I love it. I just and love then, it. And then what's, funky about the the region right like so things that you would buy for you know you would buy for cheap and then you get there and you're like what the hell how expensive is this what's on cheap like what's everybody throwing in their cart right and all of a sudden it's funny stuff like you go different take on on culture right like exactly you go to france and you're like you know tomatoes are free but a head of lettuce was like six euro and you're like what yeah, like, and, and, i don't and understand like, that right? it's just like exactly. and there's got to be a good reason but it's funny it's like it's just different and you're like this is really interesting why I mean, is that they buy dairy as close to the expiry date as you possibly can right like um, it's such a weird thing like yogurt they actually buy like here you you buy it with the longest possible expiry you can get for them, they buy it as close to the expiry is like there's no such thing as short dated. And because, how how because, freaked out my kids were when they got to Europe yeah. and, and and eggs were on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I was just gonna come to refrigerated, the egg one, right? And they're thinking, what the they, heck? What do you? My mean? kids are like, you can't buy that. You're gonna die. Yeah, you're gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. Some middle are thinking, yeah, some middle guys, they don't wash them. That's why yeah. they can sit there. Yeah, they yeah. let nature just do yeah. her thing. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, yeah you crack them That's open. They're the like, point. there's something wrong with these. These are glowing. You're like, no, no, yeah. actually, real eggs are supposed. To yeah. <laughs> This is called a real Your legs egg. are supposed to look like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I digress, but hey, I mean, I guess that's what the purpose of the podcast was, was to digress. So, But yeah. we always digress. So ultimately we're going to end up on food and because I know you're a foodie. See, like oh, that's yeah. for us, like I shit you not, we could talk food all day. Oh, we could uh, eat so food good. all day. I just love food. Everything and you know, love it, food. Is, it is nice because, you know, Alive got me into it. Essentially Alive was the one where... You know, I got into it. I lost 25 pounds over time because you're like, you know, you start to live it and literally a live work for me. It was no pun intended. Like, it's not because I was like, I'm going to live the brand. I'm going to be some like, Mm -hmm. you know, fit guy for the industry. I was just like, listen, I'm 26 and I'm out of shape and I'm like, I'm running this health brand and I'm reading a live and I have this resource that's telling me how to do everything. And I'm like, well, maybe I should, you know, do some of it. And I did. And then, you know, that was like weight and physical and strength. And then all of a sudden it went to, you know, preaching about organic and, hundred mile diets. And I'm like, well, maybe I should, you know, try growing some vegetables in my backyard. And I would happen to live in Ladner then. I'm like, well, that went really well. And then I was like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? And I started cooking and luckily, you know, as president of Alive, I had a reasonable travel and expense account. So that actually enabled me to eat some good food at some nice places and entertain people. And I, I just happened to be passionate about food and love eating and drinking. So I'm like, this is good. And I'm like, I, my standards went up because I had these experiences and I said, I'm gonna start making food that way myself. And that was it. That was old journeys. People ask all the time. They're like, you know, how did you become the chef? And I was like, like, where were you taught? And I was like, well, until five years ago, you know, it was just all self-taught. Like it was just me experiencing it and dissecting it and going, I'd love to eat that at home more often. So I learned how to be a good cook so I can eat good food. And that was it. That's what television's for. How many uh, cooking shows do you watch? I love watching these. Guys. Everyone. Yeah. I love Everyone. watching them. You know why? You, uh, you know something. what I stopped doing though? I stopped watching them after 1030 at night. Cause, yeah, cause, cause you, otherwise, you're not, you're yeah, I get, you know, yeah. like I'm in bed, I'm, I'm watching it. The next thing you know, I'm in the kitchen trying to like, you know, figuring out what do I have that I can. <laughs> you should, you should enter into my world where all of a sudden it's 10 30 at night, you're watching a food show and you just smoke the dube and then you're really eating food. <laughs> oh, and, then no, yeah. and then you're like, Oh my God, you know, I need, yeah, I need this is food. like a recipe for disaster. So That's both of those two world. things. Both of those things can't happen at 10.30 at night anymore in my world. I love it. I love, <laughs> doing, I love doing Chopped at about 11.30 midnight. Right? Going in the fridge. Okay, what am I going to do? That's so funny. Well, as I'm, as I'm waiting for this to over, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to have fresh prep, which, by the way, I think is just phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, which is so funny for you know a chef and a foodie, but with a family. It's so fun to get there and everybody participates in the cooking and the quality of the food's really good. But uh, but I'm going to head down there and I'm going to watch The, the Witcher with my, uh, with my Oh, with that's my wife. awesome. Season oh, that's... one or season two? 
we're yeah we're nearing the end of season two okay okay yeah. i'm just starting season two so uh, yeah uh, yeah but it's just better. Yeah, this goes into season one yeah i so one other thing i um this is total divergent as well i've been on you know i've been in this place where like i over christmas i bought a a, a sustainable bag right because i realized oh everything i buy like i'm i'm trying to be good i'm trying to be more green yeah. i'm recycling i'm reducing my my plastic footprint but when i buy backpacks or bags you know like it's made of crap and if i use it for a couple of years and throw it out now it sits in a landfill so i bought a paper-based bag and i was telling kenny of this that i started on this journey going you know what like i'm in this place where i don't really need anything so what i should do is now is a really good time to try and figure out how do i be better right so hmm. if i buy a shirt how do I buy something that's sustainable, something that's, you know, not harmful to the, you know, isn't going to sit in a landfill. And um, I was complaining the other day that it's fucking difficult. All I've been able to do since like November is buy a pair of socks. And, it, yeah. and even then I'm, I'm not really sure whether I didn't do any harm. Do you know what I mean? Like it, totally. it's, it's a, it's a fucking, that's why we got it's onto the mess. but but what I, I where i was going with it, it, it is, is a fucking fuck that's the, that's yeah. the, what makes it hard yeah, yeah it's like it's really hard and and yeah. um like alive actually has a sustainable section which yeah. is kind of cool like it it actually touches on some of the things like kenny was having the same frustration around like finding locally sourced foods and like being able to figure out where shit comes from and then i'm in the same boat where i like i literally would like to buy a long sleeve shirt except i can't figure out like if I buy one from Patagonia and I have it shipped to me, I think I've just like fucked up the carbon footprint. You know what I mean? Like everything's totally. like, I don't understand. Totally. Like, yeah. yeah. And we can do a better job of that. The problem is, you know, we tend to, we tend to write to follow the dollars a bit. And that doesn't yeah, yeah, mean yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we do no, advertising. like just for the record, yeah. like none, zero, like we, right, and, yeah. and anybody who thinks we do, like when they open it up, you'll see it. It's like, we do not play that game because we think that's a recipe for, for death, short-term mm -hmm. win recipe for death. Right, if right. people start going, I don't trust alive because yeah. that is writing whatever, you know, yeah. NASA tells them to write, then we're done. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, so, but we still have, you know, sustainability, lifestyle, fitness, but guess what? I mean, sustainability, you know, 5% revenue, 15% content, fitness, 0% revenue, you know, 15% content, food, you know, 40% content, 5% revenue, right. health, 90% revenue, you know, 40% content. So, yeah. you know, we have to maintain that element yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a big win for us, and I'm like, thanks for the opportunity just to share this story because it was a real inspiration for me. Um, one of Charles Lira Gross Investing Companies is a company called Tentry. And yeah. it's, it's led by these, this really young, dynamic, fantastic guy, Derek Emsley. Yeah. And, and Derek came to me and, you know, we got to know each other through YPO and through Charles and he's saying like, listen, like you again, alive, when I say you, you know, you guys are like, you know, this audience as well as anybody. So it's so cool that you just said, I'm trying to think of like long sleeve shirts and socks. And here Derek's coming to us going, his company's way bigger than ours, but he's going, <clears throat> we got to go to the U S like, we don't know that market. We're selling a ton of sustainability products, but how do we tell our story? How do we triple our size, you know, et cetera, which is really awesome. And in doing that, him coming to me and us sitting and having coffee at, uh, at Lyft Coffee at, uh, in Whistler, and I'll never forget it. You know, I'm sitting here going, guys, like, you know, we do, well, I don't know in tonnage, but, you know, give you some scope. Like we're doing like 14 semi trucks of paper a month. Like, so that's that's what we're talking about. and that's to the, that's to the printers and then you've got you know the i don't even know what the equivalent is but yeah. when you think about this and you break it down you know ups and canpar etc like yeah. you're talking thousands of trucks going out yeah you're like wow so this is really interesting we're a sustainability health and wellness magazine that you know paper's not that bad but the transportation ironically is probably yeah, worth the carbon yeah, yeah, footprint yeah. on the transport yeah. is ridiculous it's crazy yeah. And we're like, this is, you know, and, and here, here I am giving this advice on it. Now, this guy's coming to me on how to grow and, and build a sustainability brand. And I'm like, hold on a second. Like, can we do something together? And that literally birthed our thing. So we are now the biggest, this, this is a fact, the biggest magazine in the world that's carbon neutral. So we went to him and we said, he was like, he's trying to get help for growth. And I go, tell you what, 
you know, you guys have this model. They're the largest tree planter in the world now. And they planted, you know, 10 trees for every item bought. Yeah, yeah. Right. I have no idea, but, you know, call it $60 million yeah, in revenue yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, layer that times how many trees does that mean? And it, it's, it's a ton. So they actually have created a, like this enormous tree planting audit company in the background because they were spending so much money on tree planting, call it a few million on tree planting that they were like, we got to make sure we're actually living this through. So they actually created like an independent audit body. It's really interesting stuff, but for those consumers interested, go take a look at Tentry and, and it's called Veritry. And, and I love it. it. So I love and it. Like Tentry is one of the ones that I live on because I, I think they're sure. the closest to... They're the best, right? Yeah. So we said to him, I go, you know, Derek, like theoretically, what if we just do this? What about if we help you guys to market yourselves and grow your market and grow in the US? And what about if you help us to become carbon neutral? And he's like, that sounds pretty good. So they're experts at it. So we had them in and we said, what would it take? Like, this is how many, this is how many mags we print. This is how many pages essentially we print. This is how many trees it translates to. This is what our carbon emissions are. We know every detail of every place we're going to. So basically we said on one big spreadsheet, here's, here's our bad cop. This is how much carbon we use in transportation. This is how many you trees. Need we 18 million that. trees to offset your, that's kind so of. So cool. we're doing. One point nine million trees. You weren't far off with a zero. One point nine million trees planted this year, at about ten cents a tree USD, something like that. It gives you some scope. A couple hundred thousand dollars. This cost us become carbon neutral. Straight hard right. cost to the business. But then we sold them two hundred thousand dollars in advertising, and we said, "Let's call it even." It's a wash. So basically, what we ended up doing was free advertising for them, so that they can grow their market. Yeah. They made us carbon neutral. Yeah, you know now all that's of a sudden, fantastic. isn't that really cool? That's and now awesome. we're that's really cool. We're finally able to go in and 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 apply as a triple bottom line business because we actually fit the criteria, and you know it's really cool. So For so a that publisher, was, eh? not bad. Yeah, as a publisher, and it, you know it, that that's a that's a really neat thing. So we're we're super excited about it. And that. This just literally we started announcing this in like November. Oh, that's so cool. I think that's year, awesome. Year yeah, to put together. I think that's awesome. I mean, just see, this has been, you know, the whole year of 2022, the whole 13 days, Phil and I have been on this all the, every day. <laughs> just yapping. And again, I think it's more because sort of, right. you know what it is? You've done something though. Like you actually have contributed to it. And I think what we're all, fine, what, what Phil and I were talking about is we do things, but I, it's, it's so small for so big. Like we want to, you want to make a real difference. Totally. You know what I mean? As opposed to this, bullshit where I, I put a can into recycling which is great yay team but but that's like social media that. right that, that's table like, whatever so you know and it's an easy yeah. it's an easy thing to say you know i i i said this all the time you know you know i, I used to love talking to you know people could listeners can't see this but bunny ears right like i used to love talking to rich people who said money doesn't matter like i, I would just roll my eyes and be like it's, it's such <laughs> yeah, a you, you two give kids me your money home, yeah. And I'm trying to figure out how I'll to pay give you my bills. money. And then and let's, like, just, the money. let's just have that chat. <laughs> right. But the reality is, you know, yeah. whether it's money or stage of life or these things, and you talked a little bit about Phil, where you're like, you know, eventually you get to a point where you go and, and, and I'm in this point in my business career where I actually go, I actually don't need my job. Like yeah. if, if, if my, if my employers don't want me to work for them, yeah. I'm fairly certain 17 other people do. So, right. you know, that's a, that's a blessing. And that's not meant as arrogant or anything else. It's just the stage of life you get to where yeah, right. you know, I, I've, I've worked hard. I've, I've, I've got to this situation and, and that's the place. But yeah. what it's bought me is a sense of freedom to say, you know what, when I wake up every day, I actually can be 100% authentic. If I go, you know what, this is the way we're going to do it because I don't want to run a magazine that talks about sustainability that isn't sustainable. Yeah. But I don't want to do that anymore. So yeah. we're not going to do that. Yeah. And then the decision's done and not everybody is empowered to make those kind of decisions. And, and that is not then to point a finger. Those are the no, people no. put your can in the recycling, do your part and, right. and, and do your very best. But the very best for me now is not recycling. The very best for me is actually doing something bigger and better, right? Actually changing society because we have this influence and I feel a moral responsibility to do more than preach. Yeah. It's it's a freeing feeling. Kenny and I have talked about that too. Is we're both kind of in the same boat. Where well, we're going to take this um, one offline. The three of us. I we got I got an idea. There's got to be something we can do about that other thing we were talking about with the food thing. Love it. We'll talk. We got to talk. I got to. You should now. take me offline. I mean, I don't. I, I I I thought I had 45 minutes, and I've already. I, I'm just if if I just keep talking without allowing you guys to interrupt, I figure I can take this thing. <laughs> 
listen so let's let's do this so so let's oh, let's you, shut Paul. down the 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 listener portion because i actually do want to talk to you about this i think i'm i'm firing all the same cylinders kenny is so and then at some point we can always we can always um bring you back on and and enlighten the, the yeah, yeah 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 but uh guys thanks for listening we'll put ryan um ryan ben's um contacts and live and all of that stuff in the episode notes and then and then linkedin uh, a good way to get a hold of you yeah. if someone wants to talk to you like what's the best 100 percent. yeah actually linkedin's fantastic i i okay. wasn't always the biggest fan but i i love using it now and i'm also a really available guy so you can put up my like direct email i'm, I'm good i love it okay awesome. awesome awesome okay i'm gonna stop recording